Good afternoon. I'm Bobby Robbins, the president of the University of Arizona. We launched our antibody testing at the university, and I'm so excited we're ramping this effort up this week across the state. The governor has generously partnered with us so that we can offer antibody testing to all frontline healthcare providers and first responders across the state of Arizona. And of course, we got started in this because um, I believe that we needed to test all 60,000 members of our University of Arizona family, our 45,000 students and our 15,000 faculty and staff. Um, <clears throat> so when the, when the governor found out we were doing this, uh, he asked us, could you expand it a little bit out to the frontline healthcare providers and first responders? And of course we said we would. So we're excited that all of this is going on and, and we'll be giving you updates for re-entering with uh, bringing our students, faculty and staff back to the campus in Tucson. And we're all very excited about it, but we're also have a little bit of angst because it's gonna be um, a different experience. For instance, people are gonna need to wear masks and properly socially distance. And, and we're talking about a 3T or a T3 approach. We're going to test, we're going to trace, and we're going to treat our uh, our students. Today, I'm, I am just thrilled to be joined by one of our absolute superstars at the university, Dr. Cecilia Rosales, our Interim Associate Dean of Community Engagement and Outreach at the Zuckerman College of Public Health. She's also a professor and chair of the Division of Public Health Practice and translational research at our Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Dr. Rosales, thank you for joining the, uh, I don't know what this is called, uh, a Zoom video or a podcast, or just so that people uh, primarily inside the, the University of Arizona family can learn about what you're doing. And thank you so much for what you're doing. But also it's being captured uh, by many people outside the state. We're seen as a leader in, uh, in how we're dealing with this unfortunate tragedy. So first of all, how are you doing? Well, trying to, trying to stay uh, safe, trying to stay at home as much as possible, but also trying to get some, some exercise and some sun. Yes, I, I think those are all important. And as I keep telling people, um, sleep is the most uh, uh, effective performance enhancing activity we can have. But I know people are very stressed. They are feeling isolated and lonely. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that if we can come back in some way to campus, that'll help. But what, please tell me about the primary prevention mobile health unit. Why, why is it even more important now uh, to our Arizona communities? Because you've been doing this work for a long time, but now you're being put into double and triple duty action by using this uh, prevention mobile health unit. Well, thank you for asking Dr. Robbins. Yes, um, one of my favorite projects, the university's primary prevention mobile health unit provides free preventive health screening assessments um, such as blood, you know, blood pressure, glucose levels, hemoglobin A1C among others, and access to health services to the underserved populations. And we try to target key priority issues such as nutrition, obesity, diabetes, mental health, and domestic violence. Under normal circumstances, uh, the mobile health unit teams operate out of our Arizona campuses in Tucson and Phoenix, uh, taking the mobile health vans to public events and community centers and other locales across the state. But uh, since the pandemic, the teams do operate via phone and through online meetings, communicating through text, and social media messaging, as well as FaceTime and Skype in the battle against this novel coronavirus. We are finding our callback campaign, finding that, we're, that many of the mobile health unit clients are out of jobs, whether they're, they've worked in agriculture, construction, landscaping, restaurants and hotels, among many other service jobs in the state. Yeah, well, thank you for doing this important work, even in non-COVID times, because it's really important. And I think as the, as the flagship uh, AAU land-grant university in the state, this is our mission to serve all the people in the state, particularly those who are the most vulnerable and uh, less resourced. 
what's the plan for rolling this antibody testing out to uh, with the help of both our Tucson and our Phoenix teams? Well, these, these uh, mobile health units will be participating in the antibody testing in all counties, as you mentioned. We are currently part of the pilot that started April 30th in Tucson. For example, this week, um, we're serving as the backup lab during this pilot. And in the, in the following weeks, we're, uh, we will be able to um, be available to travel to different sites, such as fire departments, to begin collection of blood samples from first responders. And our folks will be driving the van and the team will consist of phlebotomists from the All of Us Research Program and someone from facilities to clean and sanitize before and after each of these site visits. The Phoenix unit is, is slated to help with the rollout also to the smaller and less populated counties and serve as a testing site as well. That, that's really fantastic. I, I'm, I'm so proud to, to say that I, I get to uh, know people like you and the important work you're doing and, and literally every day I'm meeting three, four, 10 people at the university who are all coming together in a collaborative way to try to serve the public, which is, is part of our mission. Uh, certainly part of this is service. Some of it is research, like you mentioned to all of us and, and this antibody testing we're doing. How are we helping those beyond the borders of Arizona? Uh, I'm thinking down into Sonora, our partners in Mexico, I know you're doing some virtual webinars and some Zooms to try to share all of the incredible experience and uh, our learnings at the University of Arizona as we try to welcome back 60,000 people. Yes, we are collaborating uh, with the U.S.-Mexico Border Health uh, Commission and also with the El Colegio de la Frontera Norte, which is based in Tijuana, Mexico. And we've organized uh, a virtual seminar series on COVID-19 response along the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, the new virtual seminar series brings together public health experts and uh, leadership from both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border to share information and mitigation efforts in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and of course, to find opportunities for binational collaboration and to share resources, which we're doing quite a bit of that these days. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I know uh, J.P. Jones uh, and the College of uh, Social and Behavioral Sciences uh, uh, now owns uh, Governor Castro's former home and is setting up a, uh, a center in Nogales, uh, Arizona. Um, but it sits right, I mean, if you sit on the back porch of that house, which I'm sure you've been there, yeah. you look right down into... Uh, Nogales, Sonora, and, it, and there's so much important work being done along the uh, border around health issues. This is before COVID. Now it's exponentially more important, this work, because these are the underserved and marginalized populations that it's our stewardship re responsibility to try to help. I, I think finally, could you tell me more about uh, Maricopa County's plan to hire some of our undergraduate and graduate public health students? What, what opportunities are there? It seems like a hot field to be in now. It's the field to be in these days. Uh, we're very excited about collaborating with the Maricopa Public Health Department uh, in Phoenix. Um, college public health faculty will develop collaboratively, of course, training curriculum on contact tracing for investigating COVID-19 cases identified within Maricopa County and train new investigative staff. We've also been tasked with identifying 70 of our May 2020 graduates from our public health undergraduate and graduate student cohorts. These 70 graduates will be contracted and will be provided benefits to fill these new positions at the County Health Department to conduct investigation of COVID-19 cases. And then upon completing the case investigative process over a period of several months to a year, uh, some of these temporary county staff will be retained as permanent staff by the public health department. Well, it's very exciting. yeah, that's so exciting. And you know, the, the number of applications we're getting for College of Public Health, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, uh, is just tremendous because I think people see there's an opportunity to help uh, individuals that are less fortunate than themselves and who are ill. And uh, I, I just love the entrepreneurial and public uh, spirit 
of coming together to fight this incredibly destructive pandemic. And I think, unfortunately, this is going to go on for until we have a vaccine. Uh, I, I was just um, uh, listening to something uh, and, and, and then followed up with some reading about the incredible progress that the, the lab in Oxford is making on a vaccine. I think there are many others, probably 10 or 12, uh, either uh, biotech or drug companies or labs like at universities, which I think are incredible assets to deliver in this fight against COVID-19. But I, I think we're probably at least a year or so away from, from having an effective vaccine. We've got to get a safe, effective vaccine. Then we've got to manufacture three to 600 million doses. Then we've got to distribute it across the US and then we've got to administer it. So the public health uh, field is gonna be uh, flourishing and we need bright, uh, interested, caring and compassionate uh, young people to, to take this on as their life's work, just like you've done. And I'm, I'm so happy that uh, the University of Arizona has you uh, here and for all the tremendous work you're doing. So thank you again for being such a leader you are and, and helping to serve the people of Arizona. Well, thank you, Dr. Robbins, for the invitation to meet with you today. And I'd like to remind your followers to join AZ COVID text at azcovidtxt.org so that they can receive critical updates about COVID-19 as well as health and support tips to assist them through the stay at home period. Yeah, I really love that. I learned more about that uh, uh, last week and uh, tremendous and, and hopefully across the video we'll have that so people who are watching this will be able to get on that website. And I think that's tremendous, uh, a tremendous asset that we're providing to the public. Thank you again and please join us next session when we'll have another incredibly dedicated superstar from right here at home in our own University of Arizona Wildcat community. But until then, please follow the rules, do social distancing, stay at home until we tell you the coast is clear. Uh, even when we tell you the coast is clear, just ease out and, and ease back into life uh, in a very uh, purposeful and vigilant way because this, this virus is gonna be with us. And Dr. Rosales, we didn't talk about the inevitable spike we're gonna see during the usual uh, influenza season in November and, and into the winter, but it's coming. So we all have to be prepared for it. But this is a highly contagious, highly infectious uh, virus. So we've got to be vigilant and maintain the social distancing, uh, wash your hands, uh, pay attention to the rules, and uh, testing, testing, testing is going to be so important. I'm excited about the part we're playing, but I would like to see everybody in the state of Arizona uh, be tested. And it's going to require multiple tests. So. Dr. Rosales, again, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And to everyone out there who's watching, just remember, stay safe, be healthy, and as always, bear down.